Now, I just want you to think with me for a second. Why in the world would a modern generation with, you know, smartphones and computers and lights and, and cars, why would we be reading ancient material like this? Why? It's, it's in the past. It's old. They have nothing for us. Friends, that's not true. You see, when you and I read the Bible and, and, and understand the Bible, there's 66 individual books combined together to make the Bible, starting from Genesis, the book of Revelation. In that book, there are six different, seven different dispensations where God deals with different people in different ways and he gives them different commands. So when you and I start reading the Bible, understand when you're reading the Old Testament, we're not looking for commands in the Old Testament. We're not going to read through today. The promises to Midian is, is, is that to, to, um, uh, to Gideon that the Midianites are going to be killed by him. That he's going to have a victory. So don't like, read that and say, oh, there's, there's a command for me to go kill Midianites. That's not what we're looking for. What we're looking for in the Old Testament is the historical reality of two things. Number one, reality. What is reality? Well, reality is truth. When people say, what is truth? Truth is reality. All right? So you start reading in Genesis. Reality is there's a God in heaven. Reality is that God created the heavens and the earth. It wasn't made by chance. Reality is, is that men and women are made in the image of God. And yes, they are two sexes. And that's reality. And then, and then sin comes into the world. That's reality. And, and man rebels against God and, and all sorts of wickedness and it's found in violence. That's reality. Solutions to these problems are found in the reality that there's a God in heaven and we submit to him. So, so one is we learn reality. Second thing we learn is this as we read through the Old Testament is that there are a ton of principles that you and I need to live really well. So, so think about this. You might be reading in 1 Corinthians. You and I should be reading the epistles. Why? Because those are where you and I are going to find the commands for the generation in which we live, for the dispensation of the church. You need to read Romans. You guys need to be experts in Romans and 1st, 2nd Corinthians and Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, 1st, 2nd Thessalonians. You need to be experts in all those because that's where the commands for us are found. But as you're reading those commands, what you're going to find is, is you're going to look back at the Old Testament. There's going to be principles. For example, in 1st Corinthians chapter 6, they lived in a wicked city in a wicked time. And the church there, and we're, we get the same command there, is to flee immorality. But you might be reading in the book of Genesis. And you find there a young man who was sold as a slave by his brothers to some of their cousins who sells them as a slave to some others. And he ends up in a place under the providence of God in Potiphar's house. His name is Joseph. And you remember there's this, there's this cougar there. And she's trying to seduce him. Remember that story? I mean, this could make a soap opera. I'm serious, man, it's crazy. And she's trying to seduce him, and he's a man of God, he fears God, and he says, I, I can't do this, I don't want to dishonor God because there's a God in heaven. I don't want to dishonor my master, uh, Potiphar. I'm not touching you, lady, stay away from me. And she tries to seduce him. Remember that whole story? And he flees immorality. So, so we get this command over here. Here we find a principle. How does this work out? How do you insulate yourself? What do you do when, it, when these things come? So there's all sorts of principles that we're going to end up getting from the Old Testament. Does that make sense? So when we look in the book of Judges, I think we as pastors have not done a good job. We haven't helped you interpret the Bible as you're reading it. <coughs> so when you're reading and you're looking at these Old Testament passages, remember we're looking for key principles. So I always want to illustrate this to you. This, the story of Gideon, I want you to see seven principles. We're going to maybe just get to two of them today. But, but I want you to see these principles and how important they are for, for a nation, how important they are for a family, how important they are for individuals, how important they are for you and your personal life right now.